We've got a lot of rope and are about to test how high an ordinary kite can fly. So we bought this inexpensive kite that was supposed to lead us to success. But unfortunately, the kite didn't fly well. In addition, we wanted it to carry an action camera to record this video from the air, but the kite wasn't promising at all. Then we bought this big kite, which had almost 10 times the bigger area and a long tail for stabilization. Without additional weight, the kite flew very well and seemed to be able to fly quite high. But as soon as we attached the camera to it, we realized that it also didn't have enough strength to lift it and keep it stable in the air. So we ordered on the internet a huge kite which is said to be able to lift not just one, but two cameras. Its frame is made of fairly thick carbon fiber tubes, which should be strong and flexible at the same time. Because at high altitudes, it will be under a lot of pressure from strong wind. And look how big it is! It's as tall as a man! Even I became afraid of flying away with it. When we did a test run of the kite, we realized that it was so powerful that it couldn't feel the weight of the camera hanging on the string. Then using a piece of plywood and some string, we created a platform for two cameras. Even by changing the angle of the main string, the camera kept its lens in the direction of the kite. Also, we bought this special device to wind the kite rope around it. It reels very easily as this reel is made of lots of glass balls. We were excited to start winding the rope on it, but we faced a problem. After winding on it a hundred meters of rope from one coil, we realized that the second coil would not fit on it. We bought ten skeins of rope of a hundred meters each to make it fly at least one kilometer upward. So, using the planks left over from the birdhouse, we made a large strong station that could hold more than a kilometer of rope and even wind it up automatically. Between the two boards, we installed a metal threaded rod, which decided to strengthen the places of insertion by the metal pads so as not to damage the wood during the fast and long rotations. Moreover, it would be a bad idea to wrap the rope around the metal as well. So we put two of these overlays on the metal bar to increase the diameter of the surface for winding the rope and fasten them with a copper wire. By cutting the sewer pipe plugs into two pieces, we got two round plates that will control and limit the area for winding the rope. As a result, we get this spool and put it on the platform. We had 10 skeins of rope, 100 meters each, and now we have to wind them on the spool. It would take forever to spin the spool by hand. So we connect a screwdriver on the side as planned, and then the process gets much faster. But when we uncoil the rope, we won't be able to see how much rope is in the air and how much is left on the spool. That's why we cut small pieces from the bag to stipulate the remaining length of the rope on the spool and fasten them at the joints. The rope was winded quite tightly and it may seem to you that the length of the rope on the spool is shorter than one kilometer. But believe me, it's not and we are ready to move out into the open space away from the city to fly the kite. After all, if something happens and falls into a residential area, dragging a kilometer-long row behind through houses and electrical wires, nothing good would come out of that. Since the process promises to be long, we took a folding table and a chair to make the kite's flight control center of them. In the case of an emergency, we would have to stop the rope manually, and without gloves, it could hurt our hands, so we put on these gloves. While doing the tests, we realize that the kite can easily snatch the platform with the rope out of our hands and drive it toward the wood. So we tied it to the table and put a toolbox and a backpack on the table. Well, let's attach the cameras to the kit and finally launch it. In the first few minutes, we noticed the intense tension in the rope, so we decided to change the screwdriver to a more powerful one. And in a minute, the kite was at 50 meters already. But here we were faced with the first problem. 
Our camera rig didn't work and the wind was blowing it sideways, not allowing the camera to take more static shots. In addition, our platform couldn't hold and began to fall apart. That's too bad, so we decided to stop flying before we lost the kite and the camera and found ourselves in a worse situation than we are in now. Our coil was out of order, but thanks to the low altitude and the gloves, we were able to manually pull the kite to the ground and make a landing. Immediately after landing, we noticed that the camera fell off the magnetic mount and flew off into an unknown direction. After 20 minutes of searching, we were able to find it in the grass, and we decided that next time we should fix it more securely. Well, we had to pack up and go home to repair the coil, redo the suspension and come back for another try. The next day, we completely redid the platform, making holes to enlighten it and also added this tail that should stabilize it in one position. Also, because the spool edges had come apart, the rope was out of place and had to be rewound. But in two days, we were at the same glade again, ready to make a second try. To prevent the camera from falling out of its nest, we glued it with a special tape. And it's ready. The kite literally jumps out of my hand and rushes into the sky. Everything goes well, and we manage to unwind the first 200 meters of the rope pretty quickly. And then, at this altitude, the kite meets a very fast wind, and the subsequent turbulence leads it to swoop down very fast. It disappeared from our field of vision, and only on the camera footage we could see it almost crashed into the ground, and flew a few meters from the treetops. We thought it has already fallen, but luckily it managed to fly back up. And then we realized that with the load of two cameras, it could not withstand such a turbulence, especially at an even higher altitude. Not to lose it, we decided to pull it into the launch pad and take off the big black camera, leaving only the small one. It should lighten the weight by half and reduce the load on the kite. We make one last attempt in hopes of lifting the kite even higher. Pretty quickly, we pass the first 300 meters and are in the direction of 1000 meters. We see that at the top, the wind is so strong that it has almost doubled the carcass tube. But we continue to unwind the coil. The kite flew higher and higher. But at one moment, the kite was nearly attacked by this huge eagle. We had to intercept it with our drone and with confident maneuvers, kick it out of the airspace. In the meantime, we already reeled off 500 meters of the rope and were halfway to our goal. The higher the kite flew, the higher the lift was, and the heavily stretched rope was starting to literally cut the mark flags into pieces. Before the kite starts falling apart, we started uncoiling the rope even faster, and we saw the mark saying that there was only 200 meters of rope left on the spool out of 1000. The quadcopter could not endure such a strong wind, so we had to land it. From here on, the kite flew alone. We see the last badly damaged mark that goes into the sky, and that's when we realize we are in the finish line, and we are only a hundred meters away from the thousand meters. I don't know how we're going to wind the rope back on the spool out of this load, but there are only a few turns of the spool left to see the one kilometer mark. And we finally did it! There's a whole kilometer of rope between us and the kite, and we are really scared because it's hanging on this tiny knot. I don't know if anyone has ever flown a kite to such a height, it is genuinely something unbelievable. Usually, we associate flying a kite with low altitude of a tree level, but we manage to set it higher than the usual height. If there are any kite experts among you, point out our mistakes and give us some advice, and maybe we will try to fly the kite even higher.